So I picked these up. These are 30 millimeter, 300 ZX brakes. Uh, they also have them at 26 millimeter. They have them in iron and aluminum. These are the aluminum 30 millimeter ones. They bolt right up to S14 uh, stock hubs, five lug hubs, and I think four lug hubs too, but you have to get the rotors redrilled, the 300 ZX rotors redrilled for four by 114. But to avoid all of that, I'm just, going to convert to five lug. These are pretty rough when I got them. Uh, shout out to Goodyear Rob, who hooked it up with these and sold them to me for a good homie price. Uh, Jur's taken these apart before for his 240, and he said that he took off all these bolts, took off everything, cleaned everything, and taped off all the holes and painted them. And that seems pretty try hard. It seems like a classic Jur move, but I might follow suit since these are so dirty that it might just be worth my while to completely disassemble them and clean them and then paint them. Um, as far as paint and the color, I'm not sure. Uh, I was thinking just a simple black because I don't know what color my car is going to be. But we have some cool colors in the garage, so really it's going to come down to what we have available here. We could go super hot boy, super scene have like that Tiffany blue, we have glitter, we have a dark blue, which is what Jer's SC brakes originally were. But I see that we have my favorite color, Carbon Mist, and we have a full-ish can. So, I think Carbon Mist, and then after all that dries in a couple of days, I'm gonna paint the letters, the Nissan letters in this shiny gold. I love this Rust-Oleum paint, really nice. Metallic's great, it has a really nice shine. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. First, it's held on by one, two, three, four bolts. Doesn't look like it's gonna come apart easily, but Jer said it comes apart and uh, shouldn't be a problem. If you've been working on cars or anything that requires like bolts for a long time, you get pretty good at guessing the sizes and I'm two for two today. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess 14. Ooh, yes, I'm good, all right. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not, it's not coming loose. It's definitely not loosening, Jer. Oh, maybe this battery's weak. Let's try a different one. Probably shouldn't just hit it with an impact. Should probably just like actually try loosening it first, but you know. Nope. Definitely nope. One for four. All right. Nope. Oh yeah, they come apart. All right, Jer. Liar. Okay, so what are we? Four for eight? 50-50 right there? Hit it with some PB blaster. Save that one. Save the day. All right, let that sit for a little bit. What do you guys like to see us do? We should uh, leave us some comments. We need more subscribers. Share this with your friends. Be annoying on Facebook. And tell us you shared it and show us. And maybe we'll send you a sticker or something. It's like max extended. So yeah, you just need the full force of your freaking body to take that, at least that one. There you go. There you go. I hate you, Jer. Why didn't you tell me this was a good idea? So you guys know now, if you have really dirty old 300ZX brakes you found at like pick and pull, or you bought off some random dude on a 240 group, and you want to take them apart completely, Clean them and paint them. This is what you're in for. Maybe. If you're unlucky. See? Maybe. And this is why it didn't come out. Look at all that. Alright, cool. Let's compare. Look at that. This is why this one was such a pain in the butt to get out. 
probably wasn't fully tight and rust got in, whereas these have been, were like fully tight, didn't get anything in there. Um, that's a good See, that one was a pain in the butt and that one is not good looking good. These all look kind of crappy, but this was the easier one. Um, so I guess, you know, you just take these apart now. Probably end up soaking the bolts in something. I'm not sure yet. Maybe just Simply Green. I think, I think that's what Jer did. He just, he like soaked the bolts and then hit them with the wire brush. Look at that. Boop. I'm just gonna let it soak in this and then I think I'm gonna hit it with the wire brush like Jer suggested. So I can actually start scrubbing off stuff, not just wiping it with the towel. I don't know what day, I don't know what continuation. In fact, I actually feel bad for Jer because he has so many clips to go through of my projects and none of them are completed in the day. Uh, let's turn on the music. I'm throw it back to you. This going on right now. There we go, I'll get some background music, not too loud. I just wanted to finish up the break video today. Maybe, possibly. You know, you're supposed to tape off the holes. You don't really want to paint into them. You'll get paint in the threads and it might not thread right. It'll mess everything up. But I'm lazy, actually. I'm just rolling up cut up index cards and sticking them in because that, in theory, as long as uh, like a fairly perfect circle, which they're not, would cover all of the threads and the holes. So you can see some of these are kind of angled, which is bad because paint could technically seep in the little like areas. But you know that's a risk I'm willing to take. There you should just lay over. And these I ended up just hitting with the orbital sander. I was <laughs> this dirt is killing me. I don't know how to get it all off. I don't have the patience or like I don't feel like spending the time. So I just I just hit it with like some of the 120 grit I've been using from the bondo job that I'm doing on the side. I got all of these guys nice and taped off. Uh, these ones are f these ones are folded over because that's actually a break from glue, so can't let anything get straight down to that hole. And these are the nipples, so I had to take them off. But other than that, um, they're not perfect, so this might go terribly because it's like this is half-ass prep. This is what you don't want to do. But honestly, I'm not about to clean 20-year-old rotors for a week. It's not worth it. I'm not the right stuff to clean it. I'm just I'm over cleaning it. I'm just about to hit it with spray paint and hope for the best. And these are spray paints we're using. Using some self magic primer, Stolium paint primer in one, gloss black, which we love to use. And I'm gonna experiment and see if I can like hit it with some gold while it's still wet, like a really light dusting of gold, and maybe get some like gold accent in there. I don't know. And of course, finish it off with the uh, automotive enamel clear. Sorry, it's like not focusing. But uh, yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Sun's going down, running out of time. Be able to hit it with some black real quick. They're looking all right. They're gonna be definitely like at least five footers. You know, you're not gonna come up close and look at these and be like, wow, those are amazing breaks. Ready to get them done. You'll be like, wow, this asshole just hit these with like plastic dip. I mean, they're not gonna look that bad. I mean, it's an exaggeration, but you know, you can really kind of see where the imperfections in the breaks themselves are. See that like pitting and gashing. Uh, I don't know if that's just dirt or the calipers because they're 20 years old and been like sitting in a parts bin forever, but you know, for the most part they look pretty decent. So I'm gonna get like another coat or two of uh, black, uh, gloss black on this just so there's a thicker covering. And then probably just go maybe even from like this high and just dust. Like nothing crazy. Um, and just let it let the flakes, the metallic flakes from this paint fall in it. And just, it'll be really subtle, but hopefully you'll be able to see it. Check that out. Look at that. That's just your basic paint primer gloss black and just hit from a distance with uh, the, the metallic gold. And at night it looked like it just became gray, and but like now I can, you can actually see gold flake and stuff like that. And to make it look even better and have some contrast and have some pop, I'm gonna hit the Nissan logo with the orbital sander and take it all off so it's just a silver. Which is why I'm taping this off because even though the orbital sand is level, I, like the last thing I want to do is just nick something and ruin my life. So I'm going to take the extra two seconds to tape off everything. In fact, I'm going to go with two layers of tape around it all, just in case the orbital pushes through the one and messes it up. Oh, a little update too. We manual swapped the S14 yesterday. Yay! Woo! We were going to film it for you guys. We filmed like a tenth of it and then we just kind of had to bust ass and like actually get the swap done. But yeah, this is the final step in it all before reassembly, but hopefully this is a helpful how-to guy, little tips, little tricks of what you can do 
you know, like, it doesn't take a pro. You don't have to get things powder coated. People will be like, oh, how's it gonna last? Like, it's gonna mess up. And Jerry, you have basically the same paint, right, on your car? Yeah, my SC300 has painted brakes. Has that ever given you an issue? No, they're fine. They're completely fine. The Nissan logo was like kind of messed up before I got the brakes. I don't know what happened, but there's a gash in it and these weren't completely flat. So I can't get like an even sand and therefore I can't get some of these nooks and crannies. I think if I hand sanded it, I might be able to, but I'm, I'm over it. Like this is fine by, for me because it looks really good and it'll look even better in the contrast. So for me, it doesn't have to be perfect. These are cheap brakes, quick paint job, but you know, it still looks good. It just goes to show you don't need a $400 power, powder coat. I mean, look at that. So sick. That that costs maybe what like 10 no i'd say less than 20 bucks in paint and that's it i mean the orbital sander is good but you could honestly do that with just a, a hand sandpaper it would just take you a little longer that took like two minutes to sand so yeah oh, nice. look at that hey guys so it's been i guess a couple days since we put together the brakes the reason we didn't get to film a whole outro in one day is because Fun fact, if you ever change to these brakes, you need to order the hardware ahead of time. We tried AutoZone, we tried O'Reilly's, uh, we tried Napa, shout out to Napa. They let us like rummage through their back section for any sort of brake hardware that would work, but there was no luck. Um, so I had to wait like a week for the hardware to come in. We were missing a clip. Um, so we put it together and just didn't drive the car, parked it. Um, but they look great. They have good contrast with the wheels, which could use a nice cleaning. They stop really well, like super, super strong. Definitely probably almost overkill for this car. But yeah, I really like how it, it works. Um, I've driven the car a little bit now. I mean, I haven't gotten it super duper hot, but I mean, there's no peeling or chipping or anything like that. And it doesn't look tarnished at all. And again, they stop great. And those are on like used pads and rotors. And I didn't even change those yet. And they still feel amazing, way better than the stock ones. I mean, that's what you get when you get, go from single piston to four piston. If you guys learned something, uh, show us your Nissan brakes if you do them. Uh, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, and stay tuned for our next project. <laughs>